in this video, we're going to go through a sixth factor which affects acidity, and that is one of orbitals. Now, you might remember way back, we learned the electronic configuration of carbon, and it went like this. It was fill up the first two electrons, one in the 1s orbital, and then the next two went in the 2s orbital, and then the next two went into the 2p orbital. So to give you six electrons in total, we got actually four valence electrons. And we fill up the 2s, why? Well, the 2s is actually lower in energy than the 2p. And which means that it is more stable. Why is it more stable? Well, it turns out it's closer to the nucleus. And remember, electrons are negatively charged. The nucleus is positively charged, so those attract. And therefore, the closer you can get, the stronger that term is going to be in the electrostatic equation. So basically, the closer you are to the nucleus, the more stable your electrons are. And why is this important? Well, it becomes important when we're thinking about how well is a negative charge going to be stabilized on a carbon atom? It's going to depend on the types of orbitals that are involved in its bonding. So I'm just going to draw out a couple of little examples here. We have an alkyne on the far left, and here's an alkene. And then let's draw out an alkane negative charge. Okay. And these are all the con conjugate bases of an alkyne, an alkene, and an alkane. And if you recall what the hybridization of this carbon is right here. This is an sp hybridized carbon. And this carbon here is sp2. And this carbon here is sp3. Right. So when you think about hybridization, remember what's the composition of each of these types of situations. So if we have an sp hybridization, we have one s orbital and one p orbital contributing to the sp hybridization. Sp2, it's one s orbital and two p orbitals. Sp3, it's going to be one s orbital and three p orbitals, which hybridize. So in total, you have two, three, and four orbitals involved in each of these two, these three different situations. What that means is that the sp case, the case where you have one s orbital and one p orbital, it's actually 50% of its composition is s. And as you go down to sp2, it's, it's only going to be one out of three, so it's going to be 33% s. And sp3 is going to be 25% s. So what that means is that sp, there's going to be more s character in the orbital. And that also means it's going to become more stable. It's going to be more stable. It's going to be closer to the nucleus. And that is going to be a contributing factor in stabilizing the negative charge or the lone pair on our carbon atom. So this is going to become more stable. This is going to be, this is going to be the least stable in our series here. Actually, instead of more, maybe it should be more grammatically correct and say most. So as it turns out, that means that our acetylene, I'm going to rub this out, pardon me, a little bit more space here. So when we're comparing acidities, what does this mean? Well, this means that if we're comparing the acidity of our acetylene to give the conjugate base of the acetylene, negative charge, and H2C, I'm just going to draw this H2C, CH2, and that would give H, no, that's really ugly, isn't it? H2C, CH minus, and, oh, sorry, plus H plus, plus H plus, and then uh, HCH3 gives us CH3 lone pair negative charge plus H plus. Okay, so each of these reactions, this is the most stable, and CH3 minus is the least stable, which means that 
this reaction on top is going to be the most favorable. So that means that it's going to be the most likely to dissociate and, and lose H+. Plus. So that also means that this is the most acidic. And this is the least acidic over here. And you can actually measure the acidity of each of these species. And, and in a later video, we'll talk about how to do that. Um, the difference here is about a factor of 10 to the power of 25. So this alkyne here is about 25, 10 to the power of 25 times more acidic than methane. And you think about how large that number is, it boggles the mind. It is one, remember a mole is 10 to the power of 23rd. So it's actually one molecule in 100 moles would give you that, that that's the ratio you're looking at. Um, very, very, very small. Okay. So we can actually apply this in a different direction and think about the stability of each of these um, in the hybridization state. And let's look at it in a different way. So over here, I've drawn three different amines, or not amines specifically, but three different nitrogen species. And I just want to call your attention here to the nitrogen in each case. Maybe I should draw that lone pairing a little bit better. Okay. Draw, look at the nitrogen in each case. So which which is going to be most and least basic question mark so basicity remember basicity is the inverse of stability so which lone pair is most stable question mark well think about this nitrogen here nitrogen is part of a triple bond it's got a lone pair it is sp hybridized this nitrogen here is um I'm reusing my arrows here this is an sp2 hybridized nitrogen and this is an sp3 hybridized nitrogen okay three atoms and a lone pair so which of these is going to be the most stable? Well, it goes back to what we were just talking about. The one that's 50% S character, SP, is going to be the most stable lone pair. And this amine here is going to be the least stable lone pair. Therefore, it's going to be the most basic. And therefore, this is going to be the least basic. So you can use hybridization not just to figure out the stability of anions on a carbon, but you can also use it to figure out the basicity of species, in, in, such as these we've drawn, these nitrogen compounds. So the, okay, the bottom line here is that uh, as you go from SP, as you increase the amount of S character on your, in your orbitals, you're going to increase the stability of your lone pair or your pair of electrons and that's going to lead to uh, obviously lower basicity and conversely uh, we're going to have these species are going to become if they have a proton attached going to make your conjugate acid more acidic